there are definitely going to be some changes when we get back to cruising. In this video, we're going to talk about the 10 things that we expect to change moving forward. There, I'm Ilana from the website and blog Life Well Cruised, where we help thousands of cruisers a month get ready for their cruise with our cruise travel tips. And of course, we aren't cruising right now. We are in the middle of a situation where all cruises are paused. And of course, this is a very difficult situation. And I'm hoping that things do resume soon and well, that the world will just be in a bit of a better place and everybody will be healthy. But in the meantime, today, what I was going to do and what I will be doing is talking about the changes that we are likely to see to cruising as well as what cruise lines can really do to bring back confidence to restore confidence to cruisers. So if you do like content, uh, cruise tips, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And as well, please consider subscribing to the channel if you do like cruise tips and as well if you like cruise vlogs, because once we start cruising again, of course, we're going to have more of that as well. So thanks so much. Let's get started now to see what kind of changes we can expect in the cruise industry in the coming months. Although we're not cruising now, and we don't have a guarantee to know exactly how things change, we can foresee that there will be some changes within the cruise industry and within the cruise lines, but these don't actually have to be negative changes. They could, in the long run, be really positive. Out of every negative situation, um, there are lessons that are learned, there are things that are learned, and I do think that the cruise lines will make some positive changes that are really going to restore confidence to both um, avid cruisers and really for new cruisers, which is something they're gonna have to do moving forward. The first thing that we're gonna see, and I think that there's no secret, no surprise about this, is the focus on health and safety and sanitation on board. So cruise lines are going to be focusing on sanitation. Actually, for anybody who has cruised over the in the past, we know how cruise lines really do a pretty great job at keeping things very clean and sanitized, but they are going already a step and 10 steps probably beyond that. So I think that we're gonna to continue to see that. What I would like to see is them really publicizing this so we can know as cruisers what they're doing. And I think that that'll go a long way to restore confidence so that we can get a sense of what is the regular routine of sanitation gonna be once we get back to cruising again. Number two, we are going to be seeing enhanced health screenings. Now we were already seeing this a little bit before the pause in cruising, but in the past, like when I went on a cruise over many, many years, we would fill out a health declaration form and it was really an honor system. Um, some of the questions that were asked were, did you have any stomach ailments? Maybe did you have any upset stomach? That kind of thing. Did you have any respiratory illnesses, a cough? those kinds of things. And it was really an honor system. Um, but now we are going to be seeing health screenings that are even more stringent. And we probably will see temperature screenings as well. So these are some things um, that we will see moving forward as we cruise again after the pause. Number three, we will be seeing sanitizers everywhere, hand sanitizers that is. So hand sanitizing stations, um, in the pool area, hand sanitizing stations as we go into public lounges. What we've actually heard from people who cruised uh, not too long before the pause, in the, the couple of weeks before the pause in cruising, is that sanitation levels were really sort of beefed up. And one of the things that was included in that was the amount of hand sanitizer stations that were placed all around the ship and not just upon entry into like the dining room or into the um, or into the buffet area, and as well, I hope that we will see an increase in hand washing stations. So, I don't know if this is going to mean that in some cases the cruise ships are going to have to add these on, but this will be something really good. We know that experts say there's nothing better um, to decrease illnesses, to get rid of viruses, than actually washing our hands with soap and water. So, seeing more hand washing stations will be something that will be great to see. We do see that on some ships that are refurbished, on some ships that are newer, but on some of the older ships, we don't see that many hand washing stations. So I think that would be great to see more hand sanitizers and hand washing stations moving forward. 
Number four, changes to the buffet area. Actually, I don't think it'll be only to the buffet area. I think what we'll be seeing is changes to anything that is self-serve. And really, this makes a lot of sense. Um, cruise ships often do this change when there is a virus outbreak on a ship, like for instance, something like a norovirus. Um, what happens is the cruise line will revert to a non-self-serve buffet, meaning that the crew will serve to the passengers and things like even the cutlery may be handed to the passengers, salt and pepper shakers, things like the fruits may be kept behind a counter. And this actually happened when my parents were doing a Mediterranean cruise several months ago. There was a case, a few cases of norovirus on the um, cruise that was before them. And so just so they didn't have a larger outbreak, they reverted to non-self-serve. And in this way, I actually think it's fabulous. The idea of fruits being kept behind the counter, I always wondered about like the oranges and the bananas and if they were touched by other people, because of course they would be. So I think it's fantastic if the cruise lines do go to a non-self-serve buffet. Of course, people still love their buffets and there's nothing wrong with that. But that is something I think that we can expect to see as well. If you can imagine the ketchup containers that are on the table and all of those kinds of things, we'll probably see a change where they may be kept behind the counter as well and then sanitized regularly. So of course we don't know the changes that the cruise lines are making in this, but it will be great for them to explain it, I think a little bit, because that'll give a lot more confidence to, um, to passengers as well. Number five, something that I hope that we'll see is a return of bathroom attendants. I have cruised on some cruise ships where we've had bathroom attendants and that person would hand um, towels after somebody washed their hands and they would just generally keep the bathroom really clean. Now this wasn't on all cruises and actually the cruise ships that we have seen this on have been on Celebrity and I love this. It just made every bathroom super clean. And I do think now in this situation, I think there's a lot, um, it would provide a bit of pressure if you want to make sure that people do wash their hands, which of course, as we know, is so important to reduce the spread of any illness um, in the future. So I'd love to see bathroom attendants on all cruise ships. Number six, cruise lines have recently um, introduced very flexible cancellation policies. And of course, it makes a lot of sense. We have this situation that we're dealing with now. Um, so what happens is if somebody has a cruise booked and for some reason they can't go or um, they just don't feel comfortable going, they can cancel in many cases up to 48 or 72 hours before that cruise. And I just think that that leaves a lot of flexibility on the passenger. Perhaps one person in the family is coming down with something. There are a lot of reasons to want to uh, leave that flexibility open. So I think that for cruise passengers right now in this um, situation that we're dealing with, to increase the chance of people booking and wanting to book, even though we don't know what's gonna happen, you know, in the next few months down the line, at least right now, I think that it's great if cruises, um, cruise lines can leave this flexible cancellation policy just a little while longer to help cruisers and restore everybody's confidence in getting back to cruising. Number seven, a lot of passengers are wondering about the crew, about their working conditions, about what happens if they are sick, what is the sanitation like in the crew areas, and I think these are all things that perhaps cruise lines can share a little bit with us as cruise passengers. So of course, we'd like to know that if the crew is not feeling well, if the waiter perhaps is not feeling well, what happens in that case? Now, I have heard that they can actually take some time off, that they do have somebody replace them. As a matter of fact, we on a past cruise did have um, a particular evening when the weather was really kind of stormy. And so of course the ship was kind of rocking and our assistant waiter wasn't there. And uh, the waiter explained to us that she was not feeling well and they did have a replacement. And so we had a replacement that night. So I'm actually assuming that when crew isn't feeling well, that they can take a little bit of time off, but I'm not sure exactly how this goes. And I think it would go 
a long way with passengers to know that crew can take time off if they are not feeling well and as well for cruise lines just to address exactly how this works and of course we do want to know that if the crew is not feeling well that they're going promptly to see a doctor and that any you know illnesses of course are contained even when it comes to you know crew and as well passengers alike number eight enhanced medical facilities so i think something that we might come to expect is that cruise lines are actually going to have enhanced medical facilities um things that they can do on the ship that they weren't able to do in the past now in the past we've always had a doctor and a nurse at least on every ship and there is a medical facility to see if you have an emergency or if you have a first aid situation um, however, really larger problems have not been able to be dealt with on the ship. However, what we are seeing is cruise lines talking about, along with the CDC and just, you know, in the news reports, we are seeing cruise lines talking about how they would be able to handle more situations on board than they were in the past. So this is something that's positive for cruisers and hopefully can bring more um, assurance to cruisers, whether it's regarding viruses or other things that, you know, medical situations can be handled while we are traveling on a cruise ship. And I think that that's something good that we can look forward to, hopefully, hearing more from the cruise lines. Number nine, I think we have to talk about the air circulation on cruise ships. Now, cruise lines have assured us over many years that the air circulation and the way it works, the air conditioning, even though it is um, old and new air that are combined, that that is safe and that particles are not getting through. However, there are some experts that actually disagree and say there are safer ways to have the air circulating on cruise ships so that even the smallest of particles can't get through and that it would actually make the air just even safer. So some reports and we can read them, you can Google this and see for yourself what you think. And of course, I'm not an expert in this, so I won't make a judgment either way, but I have seen reports that say that cruise lines can maybe use a HEPA filter rather than they use right now a different system. I think it's called the HVAC system, um, which is the combination of the new and the older air. And this sometimes collects in hallways from what I've read in public areas, goes from cabin to cabin, even though there's a low chance of, of, of particles getting through. If there are safer ways, uh, it would be great if cruise lines would maybe um, change their systems on the cruise ship, do retrofitting, and it would be great if we as passengers would know about that. And if this could make cruising even safer, if the air could be even healthier for us to breathe, I think that would be something really, really positive that would come out of this. And I'd love to hear more from Cruise Lines. If you also would like to hear more about this, please let me know in the comments below. Number 10. The last thing I think that we're going to see, and of course we can probably see many more changes than this, but I think one thing that we are going to see is on the part of cruise passengers ourselves. I think we're going to become more responsible for ourselves, more um, thinking about hygiene, more thinking about the things that affect our own health. So, and so this can include things like using the hand sanitizers, using the hand washing stations. Uh, not everybody has in the past. And I hope that cruise lines will actually go beyond encouraging and actually make this obligatory um, on cruises. One of the ways that they can do this is by talking about hand washing and using hand sanitizers and this being obligatory before entering the cruise ship, um, even on shore excursion days, as well as on embarkation. And they can talk about this being important and obligatory before heading into any areas to eat. Um, and they can talk about this during the mustard drill and they can make this really as obligatory as possible, which will be something good. But from the part of cruise passengers, I think something that we can do is we can actually take some responsibility for ourselves by making sure that we have hand sanitizer bottles with us when we go on shore excursions or hand sanitizer wipes, either way. 
we can also wipe down our own cabins. Now, I know that the cruise line attendants, they do a very, very good job already. Um, I'm actually somebody who's been very satisfied with the cleanliness of the cruise ships in over 20 cruises. We actually have never gotten sick, so um, knock wood. So very, very happy about that. But something that I will be doing upon reading about it from other cruise passengers that now I've learned from and other experts is just a little wipe down of the cabin, including the remote control, the telephone, certain things like that. I'll probably bring some of my own um, sanitizing wipes. I do a bit of a wipe down of those areas. And that'll just be something that, you know, even if I'm flying, things like that, that I'll be more conscious of. So um, whether that will make a massive difference or not, I'm not sure, but I do think overall it'll make for a cleaner environment as we travel. So I hope that um, these tips have been helpful to you as we've talked about what will happen when we return to cruising. Um, there's probably a lot of things that I haven't even thought about that maybe um, maybe the cruise lines are going to be working on. And I'd love to know from you, what would make you more confident in cruising? What kind of changes would you like to see when cruising returns? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I think we do have at least another month or possibly longer before um, we are cruising again. I think it's at least a couple of months actually now that I'm thinking about it based on the timing of making this video, which is now... Um, April uh, 17th, I believe. So um, we have some time before we're cruising again. And I'd love to know, like, what do you think is going to happen? We should just continue this conversation because surely there are going to be changes in the cruise industry. I personally am really looking forward to cruising again. I know it's such a wonderful, great way to travel and really see the world. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like. I really do appreciate it. It helps me to grow my channel and please consider subscribing to my channel for more cruise tips and of course, cruise vlogs to come in the future. Thanks so much and happy cruising.